name is John. Hey, um, John. Hi. Uh, hang on, get my screens just right. Sorry. Uh, Josh and Mark, how y'all doing today? We're we're good. I'm I'm feeling punchy. So what? So like, let's keep it let's keep it spicy. I don't know what. <laughs> keep it spicy. Okay. All right. I love the energy already. This is great. This is good. We've been talking for like we've been talking for two weeks a week. Sorry, but oh man, no, okay, but it's so... good. No, but we were we were. Mark was like, okay, maybe don't go down that road next time. Maybe like you know, not so much Courtney Love energy. You know, <laughs> hey, send it. I'm all. I'm all. I'm here for it. This all is right. great. <laughs> so I'm John. I'm with uh, Um, I have a few questions for you guys, and uh, but first yeah. off, um, I want to say a great film. I watch it last night and uh looks great but i'll get back to that um i wanted to say uh to josh that i'm a lifelong fan of uh mm -hmm. near dark and uh -huh. it was fantastic seeing uh adrian show up in the beginning yeah. of her film uh even for a short bit so uh i think i know the uh the horror camp at large will appreciate that bit of a uh, connective tissue i hope they i hope they get it i hope they see uh, these i i got it immediately i was like oh that's okay. adrian right there okay. that was fantastic um <clears throat> So there are guys, there have been a lot of exorcism movies throughout the years. Um, a lot of those focus on spectacle and gore and all that kind of stuff. This film feels more like a character piece, almost like a play. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a slow burn edge to it. And for being a 90 minute film, there are a lot of uh, two hander scenes that you both kind of give a lot of uh, uh, breathing room for. Uh, was this choice alluding to something more personal in your storytelling or did you guys just want to kind of break away from what's been done so much before? I think, I think the latter, I think ultimately, I, I, I think I speak for both of us. I'm not a big fan of the, the subgenre of exorcism movies. There's been okay. some cool ones, obviously, uh, uh, you know, but I, it's just not what I gravitate towards in horror. And I also am not like, I like, horror movies but i'm more drawn to drama and okay. i like the horror movies that i like are the ones that are in the the, the 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 sort of borderland between the two and i and i and when we conceived this movie we both thought well if we're going to do an exorcism movie let's not do an exorcism movie as much as we can right we have sure no because you just know you're inevitably like tied to certain tropes right you have yeah. to do but ultimately like how much can we get away with without making like a typical? Can we just make a family drama and the studio will think it's going to be scary or think it's a you know like how much can we get away with here without completely alienating horror fans and the studio? You know, and we'll see how. <laughs> and 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 uh, I I there's a there's a like I'm inspired by movies like John Cassavetes, The Opening Night, and Women Under the Influence. You know. If you look at those movies, they're both about someone collapsing under addiction and alcoholism. And even what's interesting about Opening Night, it's very rooted in some supernatural elements, actually. And not a many people have ever seen this movie. Uh, but that was kind of my vision for it. I thought that would be a way of subverting the genre. But I'm sure I'm going to go to like horror movie jail for some people. For doing that yeah i mean they're already getting the shackles ready but you know it, it, it we're 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 you know we're we're gonna it's interesting you know it, there's some people who are like no and some people who are very like getting on the horn with us and being like this really spoke to me and it's just you know so that's really gratifying but it, it the there's uh there's a, a a there's dance moves to the exorcism genre that have just never really appealed to us mainly because we 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 mostly get excited about female-led stuff and exorcism movies you know usually pretty much always are always about women being uh vessels and victims and i don't know that doesn't really that that's never really spoken to us for you know horror or any genre frankly and um so all the reasons we were like that exorcism movies who cares unless you're talking about like you know the granddaddy of all of them um but then when we started to think about the cliches and going like, well, what if you turn that inside out? What would that look like? Um, suddenly, you know, when you line them up, it felt like, oh, these are the reasons to maybe say yes to, yes to exorcism uh, kind of uh, world. And um, I don't know, it felt, at the time we can conceive the movie, it felt uh, apropos 
to turn the genre on its head a little bit and have uh, a man be the one who's at risk of having a sort of malevolent outside forces take over his mind and uh, and body because it's uh, when we looked out the window that's sort of what we were seeing and um you know we we you know we, there there wasn't anything uh overtly or intentionally political about it but uh it felt apropos reasonable yeah it was uh seemed like a, a an addiction movie of sorts just kind of masked under this exorcism kind of shield of something that you know you think it's one thing but really the whole tone is about something completely different so i picked up on that too how russell crowe kind of pivoted you know he was the one that was possessed not the what we've seen a thousand times in like last five decades so i i call on to that i'm glad y'all did that that was very interesting to see that subversion of uh of, of expectations um and my next question kind of goes into that a little bit. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun to be had with this film's concept. Uh, the obvious elephant in the room is the connect connection to uh, your father being in The Exorcist, but also making a remake adjacent to a remake, and the serendipitous nature of uh, Russell Crowe being in another Exorcism movie just last year. I know this film was filmed way before that, um, but can you speak on like the sort of meta nature that this film kind of took off with? I mean, yeah, you know, it's like, the, you can't remake The Exorcist, which I don't know why they did try to do that. I mean, that's just silly. Well, it was like a sequel-ish thing, right? But they were, yeah, but they're still trying, to, in spirit, they're trying to remake it. Mm, that's true. And I think I was personally kind of like, good luck. Good luck. That's a bad move. I'm Oops. sorry. That's we that's a cat. I think that's a bad move, you know, to some. Do we, uh -oh. do we lose you again? I think we might have. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can you hear us? It, there we go. I don't no. know what happened. No, I'm sure. so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Oh, it's you're going in and out, just so you know, but hopefully you'll stick around. Okay. Thank so, you. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is like goes to a larger issue I have in that or now which once used to be a little bit more on the fringe, except for the occasional breakouts, was always sort of a, br a fringe genre. And then of course, studios found out about it. Everyone's starting to commodify it. And I just feel like it's getting gentrified. And I think the horror of films in general, not all, I think the, some of the indie ones are really cool, but I think some of the big studio stuff and the Blumhouse of it all, to me, it's a bit basic. And I think that while there's exceptions in the Blumhouse oeuvre, obviously, things like Get Out and phenomenal movies that have been done, it, you know, I just feel that where is that really visceral, upsetting, uncomfortable uh, horror? And that's the kind of stuff that I like. And I don't think that's necessarily what we wanted to do. I think we are interested in that on the inside. Russell being the vector the in the, that horror movie lived within him of his past and, and and I think that that's kind of the road we took uh to do this movie and I think as Mark was saying some people are going to struggle because people now have been taught how to watch a horror film you go to the you know whatever name your sort of big release horror film and it's now you know when the scare is going to come now you know it's going to hit at this point, and you know when that person's going to die. And I know that's part of the fun of horror's always been an interactive, and there's always a fun sort of conversation. Well, it's always you the can balance have. between the things you know are going to happen and the ways they're going to find and ways to survive. Right, you. and circumvent that, but yeah. or subvert, you know, uh, counter that. But I don't know. You know, I'm bored by most horror movies that I go to, honestly, because I I just kind of go well. You're not putting anything in this enough, and, and I'm talking the mainstream stuff. Uh, and it, it's and it, what's interesting too is that you know this isn't a knock against the creators, but you know a lot of the time you're we're going to movies and we go, this is a phenomenal idea, this is a phenomenal kind of world that that's being assembled, and that you can kind of feel how it's been like 
you know, kind of chiropractic constructed. Yeah, development or, or, or reconstructed, you know, yeah. um, by executives who don't even love horror. Yeah. They're in it for the money. So and I can name them all. But you know what I mean? Like they're just sort of like, but it's the truth. They're not horror yeah. lovers. You, this was a strange thing. You sometimes like go into meetings at studios and you have, you have conversations and I'm like, oh, so what movie have you seen? Oh, I just don't have time to watch movies anymore. I'm like, you're the head of a studio. You're, you're the head of a film company. How are you not watching films? How are you not watching the thing that you love that you say is why you do? Like, what? so what are you doing? I, I don't understand. Like, you should be up on what's next. You should be watching international films coming out that are new, new voices from different parts of the country. What is happening? When did when did you when do you make uh, movies but are not interested in them? But uh, am I missing something here? I think you touched um, on a good point of that. Uh, and I got I got your warning too. Five minutes, thank you. Um, I, I think you touched on a good point. It's this precarious nature of art versus commerce. And the mainstream stuff, they draw in this the bus to the seats, but it 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 it, sh it shallows it out the pool. Well, it's, it's you, you know exactly. And do you know? Sorry, sorry. Just one. I just want to quote Diane Christensen. If sorry. you remember Network and that yeah. Yeah, monologue, yeah. where basically William Holden reads her, it's the greatest like drag moment ever, where he just it's like all you ever will be is a robot and all you, the world is becoming is business and you are just business now I, I and that but the thing is is that um you know i i i i, I think a lot of people on that side of, of the equation though i think a lot of them go in to the business with with ambitions to change it and to be better and to foster original voices and ideas and you know it's interesting over time you can sometimes when you check in with them you know you can see how it's not that they came in going like I can't wait to not give a shit about original voices or original material I you know I don't think a lot of them come from that place I think a lot of them it, it's I guess sort of like there's something about the way the industry is now that it sort of seems to like beat it out of people because mm -hmm. it's uh it's really challenging to get you know, an original vision out there now. And, you know, there's, of course, there's the holdout places. They're, you know, really fostering astonishing, exciting stuff. Um, and thank God for that. But, you know, it can... Um... I like when you said it was a play. Thank you. Okay, I, I got... I... That, that, that's very... That's like high praise for us because I think that that's very accurate. And I think in some ways... That's definitely like Cassavetti's roots. So thank you for appreciating that. You're so welcome. Thank you for writing and making it. Um, I'm, I had to ask my last question. I'm almost out of time. Um, thank you so much for your time so far. But my last question is, being horror fans, uh, what do you both want horror fans and movie fans in general to, to take away from your film after seeing it? <laughs> Don't ask for a refund. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want people to take away from it. I don't want them to have a good time. Fair enough. I don't want them I to agree. I had a great time. time. But you know what I mean? I don't, I want people to either <laughs> hate it so much that they're pissed off at me or, or us or think about things or no, we're trying to figure out there was a a, a a bot maybe it was a bot comment or uh from italy uh <laughs> who like commenting on a on a on a negative review of the movie that uh said like i was eight months pregnant when i went to see this and i lost my baby and we thought <laughs> she's completely lying first of all it. first of all first of all because we're because of i i am not laughing at the idea of a miscarriage it sounds incredibly traumatic and sure. horrible however i have a difficult time believing that if you actually went through something so awful you <laughs> she was she was yeah that's i don't know listen okay assuming that it's untrue 
and Lord knows I hope so. Uh, I don't know that that might be my favorite review so far. Uh, okay. Noted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank, thank you for your time. I'm out of time. Uh, thank you. Great film. Thanks. And uh, take care and congratulations and God bless y'all. Thanks. Thank so you. Much. Take care.